The clutch rings increase physical damage taken by 10% and increase the respective element damage you do by 15%. This is entirely not true. In fact, it seems like these numbers are kind of reversed. It actually increases the physical damage you take by 15%. As seen here, 309 damage with the ring on versus 269 damage with the ring off. That is actually 15%. So these values seem to be kind of reversed. And even so, that's not accurate because we had it a bunch of tests. And basically, the Magic Clutch Ring, while it displayed a 15% increase in AR, like right down to a T, it was exactly 15%. The amount of damage actually done was closer to six to seven percent. So the numbers just they just lie. I don't know what else to say. Um, they just they do not represent the amount of damage you'll actually do. In fact, it only increased the amount of damage from a Moonlight Greatsword dealt to a player by about twenty, which is pretty bad and not worth taking fifteen percent more damage. So clutch rings overall, unless you are a mage that's going to be fighting out of range and you're never going to take damage anyway. Um, for a, a weapon with an element, almost never, never worth it. So don't bother using it on a Drake Blood Sword to try to make it cool. Don't use it on the Dancer's Blade since you'll have to stack multiple rings. You will take so much damage and not deal enough. It is definitely not worth it. The Ring of Steel Protection increases your damage absorption by a flat amount. Basically, this means whatever the percent says, you'll take that much less damage from any source. And of course, this is not true or wouldn't be in this video. So, the original Ring of Steel Protection says it reduces damage by basically 10%, all physical damage. Um, when used uh, in a PvP scenario, player versus player, uh, it actually reduces about 2% damage. The plus 1 version is about 3%, and the plus 2 version is about 4%. Not 15%, not, not 13%. It's terrible. Ring of Steel Protection is absolutely terrible. Um, and I think this is actually on purpose because in Dark Souls 2 it had a similar thing where basically it was much stronger, um, you know, against single player, against computer enemies, um, and against players it was much less effective. Now the thing that's really misleading about this is when you put the ring on, you'll see your absorption go up by about the amount that it says it's going to increase it by, but it's a lie. It's the numbers that you see are completely irrelevant. Um, overall my advice is don't, don't wear the ring of steel protection ever. It doesn't negate Prisoner's Chain. I see people saying that a lot. Just don't don't use it. I'd rather use a Sun Princess Ring and regenerate the same amount of health that that would have prevented. Um, because it's just really insignificant. I don't know why it lies, but it lies like heavily. So it's not 15% of plus 2, it's 4%. So yeah, not good. Don't use Ring of Steel Protection. Chloranthi Ring sucks. All right, this, this information definitely started on Reddit. I remember actually reading the initial post. And um, there have been a couple of people who actually have come forward and put forth the correct information. But no, Chloranthi Ring does not really suck at all. It's not worse than Green Blossom. It's, I, I, don't know where, I don't know why people have believed that stuff. Um, basically, Chloranthi plus zero gives seven additional stamina regen a second. Plus one is eight, and plus two is nine. So that ends up roughly with the normal stamina regen rate. It ends up being around 15, 17, and 20% roughly. So um, it's pretty much on par with uh, Dark Souls 2. I don't know why people are saying it's much worse than Dark Souls 2. Blah 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 blah. No, it's actually pretty good. Um, I I would always I would always use Clarinthia Ring, um, unless you're definitely hard pressed for ring slots. But it's not a bad ring. It's actually pretty good. So don't be afraid to use it. Phantom Range makes every weapon twice as long as it actually is, and it's really annoying in PvP. Well, I, it's it's annoying in PvP. That's not a misconception, but. Um, a lot of people don't quite understand how the Dark Souls netcode works, and I definitely recommend, this is self-promoting, but I recommend you uh, watch a video I made um, for Dark Souls 2, basically explaining how the netcode works, and the exact same principles apply. In a nutshell, really quick though, if you don't want to watch it, if you're running away from an attack due to latency on his, uh, your opponent's screen, you won't, like, he'll still see you in range, and when he goes to hit you, you're still in range, so when you're running away, you'll still get hit because he sees you in range on his screen. Even if on your screen you're further away because this, the animations and the positions have not caught up to each other yet. And conversely, if you run into an attack, uh, chances are you'll just actually phase right through the blade because on his screen you haven't actually run into range yet. So there is absolutely a way to master uh, Phantom Rage in this game. It's not consistent at all. You can absolutely, um, you know, you can, you can work around it very well if you know what you're doing. That being said, there's some crazy ass hitboxes in this game too, so that has nothing to do with Netco. That's just, I don't know what the hell is going on there, but for the most part, 
give this video a watch if you don't quite understand, and you will uh, you will actually dodge a lot more hits. So, damage absorption starts dropping off at around 20% and becomes less and less useful. Now this one's totally my fault. Um, I originally made a video discussing how defense worked, and um, I unfortunately made an error. I, I I corrected it with annotations like a couple days after I I made the video, but unfortunately people saw the video and. Uh, you know, they saw it before I made the correction, so they, they didn't get this part. But, uh, damage absorption does not actually drop off after 20%. The problem was the, uh, hollow I was testing this with actually dealt, uh, standard damage, not slash damage. So, I was comparing the wrong type of defense. So, actually, uh, absorption just keeps scaling all the way up to, I don't know, like 80% or something like that. Now, the problem is heavy armor drops off a lot. So, there is still a drop-off, but it's not the actual mechanics of the game, it's the armor itself. Like, you know, full Havels compared to, like, full Knights is only, like, 9% difference. With, like, a way, way heavier investment. So, although the actual mechanics don't stop absorption from scaling, you know, any differently past 20%, the actual weight of heavy armor does. So, it's kind of right, but my initial data was wrong. Thanks for watching, guys. See you next time.